Hey guys and welcome to this video. Before I start, I just want to say something quick. I'm recording this video on Mother's Day and I'd like to dedicate this lecture to my mom, the most beautiful and smartest woman I've ever seen. Thank you mom for all your unconditional support and thank you for teaching me how to teach. I love you so much and can't wait to hug you again. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel mom. <laughs> Sorry guys, okay, let's go back to business. In this lecture, I'm gonna talk about frequency spectra of signals. As we learned before, Fourier transform for xt is defined using this integral. As you can see, there is a complex exponential function here. So in general, Fourier transform is a complex number. There are two common ways to present a complex number. The first one is Cartesian, where we have real and imaginary parts. j is the square root of minus 1. The second way is polar representation, where we have radius and phase. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please watch my lecture on complex numbers before continuing this video. It's very common to describe Fourier transform with polar representation. So basically, the amplitude here is the radius, which is usually referred to as magnitude spectrum. And whatever is next to j in the power is phase, which is usually referred to as phase spectrum. Example. What are the magnitude and phase spectrum for delta t minus 2? Based on the table of pairs, we know the Fourier transform of delta t is 1. Also, based on the table of properties that we discussed in the last two sessions, when we shift the signal in the time domain by 2, we just need to multiply the Fourier transform by this complex exponential function. So the radius or magnitude spectrum here is 1. The phase spectrum is whatever we have in power excluding j. Here we go. Done. Next example. What are the magnitude and phase spectrum for this signal? Again, based on the table of pairs, here is the Fourier transform of delta t. Also, based on the time shifting property, these are the Fourier transform of the shifted delta functions. Then we need to add them up. According to the Euler equation, cosine function can be represented in this form. In our example, 2 is missing at the bottom. So let's divide it by 2 and multiply it by 2. It's basically the same thing. Now, this one is cosine omega. So let me write the answer again. The Fourier transform here is a real number as there is no imaginary part. Cosine function is fluctuating between minus 1 and 1. So the magnitude response is the absolute value of cosine omega. What about phase? As I said, cosine omega is a real number, but it can be positive or negative. Let's look at the phase on the unit circle. This is real axis and this is imaginary axis. A real number is always on the real axis, but for positive values, we are on the right side and for negative values, we are on the left side. So, the phase for positive real numbers is 0, and for negative real numbers is pi. So, the phase spectrum is 0 if cosine omega is greater or equal to 0, and pi otherwise. Next example. This Fourier transform is given, and the question is what are the magnitude and the phase spectrum? The magnitude is the absolute value of j over omega, which can be written as the absolute value of j, over the absolute value of omega. As you may remember from my lecture on complex numbers, the absolute value for a complex number means the radius from that point to the origin or the distance from that point to the origin. J is pure imaginary and located here. So the radius is 1. And here is the magnitude spectrum. Now let's talk about the phase spectrum. This is a pure imaginary number because the real part is 0. So we are always on the imaginary axis. When the number is positive, we are on the top, and when the number is negative, we are at the bottom. So the phase for a positive imaginary number is pi over 2, and for a negative imaginary number is minus pi over 2. So the phase spectrum is pi over 2 when omega is greater or equal to 0, and minus pi over 2 otherwise. Done. It's interesting and important to know that our eyes and ears are much more sensitive to phase information than magnitude. To clarify that, first I'm gonna play two songs and then I will combine them in a funny way.
The first song is the famous Jingle Bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open Let's call it X1T. The Fourier transform is X1 omega, which can be presented in the polar form. The second song is absolutely amazing for dancing, so let's call it dance. It was really fun. Let's write it as X2T. Again, its Fourier transform can be presented in this way. Now I'm gonna create a new song by taking the magnitude spectrum from the dance song and the phase spectrum from the jingle song. Let's listen to it. However, the song is effed up. You can still hear jingle bells, which means our ears care more about phase information. Now let's create another song by taking the magnitude spectrum from the jingle song and the phase spectrum from the dance song. Here is a new song. Again, you can still recognize the dance song because the phase information comes from that song. So, here is the conclusion. Our hearing system is more sensitive to phase than magnitude spectrum. To illustrate the same point for our eyes, I'm going to show you two photos and then I will combine them in the same way that I did for songs. Here is the first photo that I took on the ferry from Victoria to Vancouver. Here is a polar representation of Fourier transform. The second photo is me on top of the Mount Douglas in Victoria. And here is the Fourier transform. Now I'm going to create a new photo by taking the magnitude spectrum from my image and the phase spectrum from the fairy image. Here is the new one. As you can see, the ocean is still there but there is no evidence of me. Let's create another image by taking the magnitude spectrum from the fairy and the phase spectrum from my image. Here I am, and the ocean is gone, is not there. So, here's the conclusion. Our eyes also care more about phase than magnitude. The main takeaway from this tutorial is, whenever you design a system, make sure you are not messing with the phase information. Even a small distortion to phase can make your system useless. Okay, that's all I want to say in this lecture. Thanks a lot for giving me your time and watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next tutorial.